A big time meteor event is underway. A big time severe weather event is about to unfold this afternoon across portions of the country. And a big time pattern change is just around the corner. We're going to look at all of it today. This is Cold Rains Weather Channel. I'm Jason Pritchard, and I am glad that you're with me on this Sunday morning, folks. We've got a lot to get into, and we are going to start with the moderate risk. That's a level four out of five issued by the SPC for parts of Oklahoma and that uh, Texas for this afternoon for up to 100 mile per hour wind gusts with line and mowing segments and up to five inch hail which is about the size of a DVD. Now we've got a moderate risk as I said from essentially Amarillo over to Dallas including Wichita and close to Lubbock as well and enhanced risk surrounds that including much of Oklahoma and the northern central portion of Texas and then a big slight risk area around that here in the central plains encroaching into the Mississippi Valley. And then just around the Delmarva region, just south of there, through the coastal plain of the Carolinas, Virginia, and down here into South Georgia, we've got a severe threat today. A little bit lesser of a risk out here, but still could see wind gusts and hail in these areas, and even a little bit of a tornado threat. Now, if we take a look at this, kind of break it down, you know, hazard by hazard, we're going to see an all hazards day, 5% risk of tornado in that enhanced risk out here in the central plains. And we could actually see some long track supercells develop some intense tornadoes. We're going to have to watch and see how supercells form and if they can move along specific boundaries that will help increase spin and give us a potential for large tornadoes here down in Texas. Also, just in eastern Virginia. There's a little boundary out there too, so we'll see how have to see how cells are tracking through the afternoon, but the risk is there for sure for tornadoes. Wind is the primary threat. What we're going to see this afternoon is supercells develop. They're going to spin up and be very intense. We've got a lot of instability, a lot of cold air aloft and lift, just broad lift working in, so a lot of wind shear to work with to keep these updrafts going. Those supercells eventually are going to merge and converge and create a big bow segment potentially we could see either a couple of different modes a big bow which is like a sort of a derecho that moves through and brings a wide area of damaging winds or we could see many bow segments as well there's a couple of different options on the table we're just going to have to wait and see how that unfolds but if we get all of that kind of working together into a big bow we could see a very wide swath of wind damage in this area here that's kind of shaded in red, uh, potentially 80 to 100 mile per hour wind gusts. If we, if we even, if we see little segments, there's enough instability and shear that we're going to see very, very high winds, uh, maybe just in smaller segments. So we're gonna watch and see how that plays out and look at the radar over the course of the day. Big hail is also a potential 30% hatched here with up to softball, even DVD size hail possible in this hatched area, folks. So it is going to be an all hazards day. So taking a look here at the radar this morning and the satellite image, actually, this is the vapor loop. We can see qu quite a few items here. We've got a big upper low coming into the northern plains. We've got another little piece of energy working in the northwest, more energy coming into the southwest, more energy here, more energy here, more energy. We've just got an active flow, folks, and we've got energy all over the place. This is setting the stage for an active day with showers and thunderstorms in various parts of the country. We're seeing that if we take a look at the radar image, big line of shower storms working through um, the UP of Michigan into Wisconsin and over here in Kansas. We're seeing uh, showers and storms here. Supercells already kind of breaking out here, but we're not looking at a big event in Texas this morning, but we've got a big area of rain with thunder and lightning through parts of Dixie Alley, including the Atlanta metro area and uh, places like that. So look at this, showers working through the Ohio Valley into Virginia and the mountains of North Carolina as well. So we're seeing plenty of activity out here, putting all this kind of into motion. You can see how all of that is moving mostly to the east, to the northeast up here and to the southeast down in the southern part of the country. Now, this afternoon, folks, we've got big, if it feels muggy outside, it's not your imagination. We've got a big warm sector with lots of high dew points. Dew points making it into the upper 60s and 70s across a good portion 
of the eastern portion of the country. And so we go to this afternoon and take a look at how that kind of plays out. We've got this big upper low working in and a boundary associated with that is impinging on the southern plains. And that is going to make use of all this moisture that you see out here. Other little spokes of energy riding through the flow are going to kick off showers and thunderstorms out east. So plenty of moisture to work with. And this just sort of persists into the night, into the evening hours tonight. And you see it start to get squashed as this low pressure from Canada this trough is working in sort of working to the east and pinching all of that moisture off and so that will start to lessen the severe threat in the coming days but in the meantime we've got another day of severe weather tomorrow to get through which we'll take a look at in a minute but instability wise out here in the plains look at this if we go through this afternoon already have big instability this morning if we work through the early afternoon hours look what we've got big purples and white showing up that is big time instability folks we're talking extreme instability four or five thousand maybe even higher in spots, uh, joules per kilogram, that is going to create massive updraft speeds and that is going to suspend hailstones, making them even larger and help to create massive downdrafts. And as those downdrafts organize later in the day, that will even exacerbate that. Low level winds are in behind all of that and it's going to help to translate all of that wind energy down to the ground. And so you can see over the course of the evening hours, as we get on into seven, eight, nine o'clock, it starts to diminish a bit as the thunderstorms eat that gasoline up and spit it out and nocturnal cooling takes over but if we take a look at the radar in the central plains this afternoon so we're about four or five o'clock here we get on into five o'clock look what happens we start to see uh, really big uh, supercells start to develop. You can see these kind of breaking out. This is what the model is showing here. Now, it's not going to pinpoint these exactly. I always talk about this. So don't look at this right now and say, oh boy, there's a supercell over my head. It's just showing you that supercells are going to develop in this region of high cape and shear. And eventually those supercells, see how they start to merge into clusters? That's what happens. And then they start to merge into a line segment. Look at this big line starting to form here in Oklahoma and Texas. We're going to see some high, high winds with this line. It's going to rapidly push off through eastern Oklahoma, eastern Texas, head toward Arkansas and Louisiana later in the evening hours. As we get way on in toward midnight, that will start to dissipate and diminish. You're still going to see some thunder and lightning, so this isn't going to go away overnight, but it's going to diminish in intensity, and that's what we're looking at over the course of the day. Looking at a little farther to the east, folks, in the Carolinas and uh, down into Georgia, we're seeing Cape build there. So look, look at this as we get on into the early afternoon hours, two and 3,000 joules per kilogram down here in Georgia and South Carolina. North Carolina getting in on the action too. So we're seeing plenty of Cape up into Virginia. Thunderstorm fuel, folks, that's what's happening. And as nocturnal cooling takes over, as that line of storms kind of comes through, it's going to eat that Cape up and uh, diminish it overnight. Looking at how the radar will play out as we get on into the afternoon hours, we're starting to see that line of thunderstorms develop, scattered showers and thunderstorms breaking out over Virginia, North Carolina, down into South Carolina and Georgia in the eastern sections. And then that line gets its act together, starts to race off toward the coastal plain. We'll see more energy working around so we could see a continuation of showers and storms as we get on into the later evening hours out here in the eastern sections of Virginia and North Carolina. Plenty of showers and uh, thunderstorms still working along a boundary down in south uh, basically this lower parts of the southeast toward the Gulf Coast as well. So that's what happens as we get to the afternoon. More showers and storms pushing in from basically Missouri through central, you know, Illinois and Indiana, close to Indianapolis. So we're going to see plenty of shower and thunderstorm activity across a big portion of the east and the central portion of the country today, folks. So that's what's going on in terms of our weather today. Looking at the temperature map, Cool across the north, we're seeing 70s basically over the northern two-thirds of the country. So that'll feel nice, especially where it's not raining. It'll be a nice day up here in New England is your best bet to stay dry through the day. But spotty showers and thunderstorms around much of the rest of the central portion of the country. Nation's midsection seeing 70s, 60s, and 50s up here under that upper low working in across the Canadian border. 90s up close to 100. Look at this, 100 degrees up here. But uh, we're looking at 90s close to Spokane, 90s and 90s. 96 up in Spokane, uh, 91 near Seattle, down in Portland as well. As you get on into the desert southwest, we're seeing well into the hundreds and also along the border counties down here in central, south central Texas, 80s and 90s with muggy, muggy conditions across the southern tier, folks. So it's going to feel nasty out there today. Looking at the hazards map, 
Still got smoke pouring in out of Canada, so plenty of air quality alerts up here in Minnesota, down into Chicago, over into the northern sections of New York State, up into New England as well. Flood watches up where we could see a couple of inches of rain in West Virginia as well and surrounding areas. Flood warnings down here in Arkansas and Oklahoma where we've seen lots of rain. We'll continue to see more rain push through. Heat advisories, extreme heat watches and warnings up for much of the western well, parts of the western portion of the country. So stay inside, drink plenty of fluid, stay well hydrated out there, folks. It's going to be a hot, hot, hot day. That regime will persist for a few more days before it maybe changes back a little bit. But here's the surface map. Boundary working in with that big trough moving into the northern plains in the Midwest. Severe weather out ahead of that with flooding potentially in uh, Oklahoma and Texas as well with very, very heavy rains. Again, flood potential up here in the Ohio Valley, severe weather along the East Coast. But look at all of this green. This is where you could see scattered showers throughout the day, maybe some thunderstorms in spots, but it's not going to be an all-day washout, but just be prepared if you've got outdoor activities anywhere in the green from Florida up into southern, well, you know, the southern Northeast through the Great Lakes back in the Central Plains and then back toward California, you could see showers today at any given time. Tomorrow, that shifts east a little bit, basically the southern tier of the country. East of this cold front extending from the Great Lakes back into Texas, we could see showers and thunderstorms develop another severe weather day potentially tomorrow, although not as active and as severe as today. But a few line segments and clusters could develop with wind out here from the Ohio Valley through the Tennessee Valley through the southeast, with the exception of the northeast where we have a little bit of a wedge situation going on here. More heavy rain, eastern lakes up here. And there's your severe weather threat as outlined by the SPC. Clicking on this, we can kind of take a look at the hazards. Tornado, a little bit of a threat. Obviously, when you have severe weather events, you can always have a spin up, but the conditions aren't there for a big widespread tornado outbreak. But we could see plenty of wind up and down the western slopes of the Alps, all the way into the southeast and the coastal plain of North Carolina and all of South Carolina, Georgia, with the exception of Florida and South Texas. Everybody else in the south could needs to pay attention for Keep an eye to the sky tomorrow for severe weather. Hail, not as much of a threat tomorrow as well. We don't have the intense updrafts that we see today, folks. So not still could see some hailers, but not quite as bad. Now, looking out as we go on into tomorrow afternoon, getting into Monday to start your work week, Plenty of shower activity up and down that cold front as it moves toward the east. And we're seeing lots of um, just general showers out ahead of that through the east and southeast. We go through the afternoon, you kind of put that in motion, start to see the real concentration of shower and thunderstorm activity across the deep south and Dixie Alley. That's where we're going to find probably the most the highest confidence of severe weather down here. And then, of course, along this cold front, as moisture pools, we get a little bit more heating than we expected yesterday. We start to see a little bit more in the way of shower and thunderstorm activity. That will continue to push east through the evening hours, diminish a little bit. But over the course of the next several days, we're going to see a very active pattern. Energy in the flow is going to spark off showers and thunderstorms. And you can just kind of see that as we go on through the week. Wednesday, Wednesday is a little bit of a quieter morning. And then we get into Wednesday afternoon and uh, see little spots of uh, rain and thunderstorm activity across the northern tier down here across Texas as well. So Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon could be a little bit of a quieter day, but uh, you can see as we go on through the week, our main areas of focus across the northern tier and across the southern tier. So that's what we're kind of looking at as we get on into next week. Looking at the temperatures for tomorrow, just to give you an idea of what happens when you walk on out the door to start your work week, much the same as today. 70s across the north with 50s and 60s up here in the northern plains, Midwest, where that low pressure is working in out of Canada. Again, this is Sunday. This is today. Sorry, I'm on the same map, but it's it's the same pattern like I'm showing you. So that moves a little bit slightly over to the toward the lakes area. But again, 80s across the southern half of the country. We're looking at 80s, 90s, uh, hot down here in the desert southwest, hundreds out here. And again, we're baking up in the Pacific Northwest all the way up and down the northern fourth of the country. We're looking at uh, 80s and 90s up here all the way to the Canadian border. So it's going to be hot out west for a few more days. So take that into consideration as we go on through the next few days. Now looking out at the pattern change, and we'll get into that meteor shower here in just a minute, but looking at the pattern change, folks, we're starting here with the upper level anomaly map and look at how the pattern is set up. So we've got the northern branch of the jet stream kind of set up like this big ridge out west, 
trough working into the northern uh, tier of the country and kind of extending through the eastern uh, half of the country as well. And we've got kind of the subtropical branch working in like this. That's how we're starting today. This is Sunday morning. Now watch what happens as we go on in over the next couple of days. That trough works into the east, kind of pulls up and diminishes a little bit in intensity and pulls out as we get on into Wednesday morning. Now look what's, now look where we are. Still got a still got kind of big ridging out here in the west. That trough still a remnant of that still hanging on in the east, particularly in the northeast. And the subtropical jet, we've got a little kink here coming into Texas, so that'll keep us unsettled there. And so that's what's happening here. And as we get on out farther in time, that trough continues to plague the northeast but diminish over time. Big ridging sets up in the central plains. And really, you've got now this big ridge pattern as we get on in toward next weekend. You've got a big trough working into the west big ridge over the center portion of the country with the exception of the northeast everybody else is under this big ridge except for this little trough down here you can see this kind of trough axis like this in the southern branch of the jet stream so we're going to look for very warm conditions over under the ridge with the exception of the northwest and the northeast maybe even the west coast down here and into texas as well so what does the temperature map show us it's going to show us kind of the same thing you see that as we start out on monday afternoon Cooler than normal temperatures dominating the center and the nation's midsection here up into the northeast. Warmer across the south, the southern tier. Very, very warm, 10 to 20 degrees above normal in spots even higher than that up in the Pacific Northwest and West Coast. That will persist as we get on into Tuesday and to Wednesday. That anomaly of negative temperature departures will move east into the lakes, Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley, back into Texas with a new trough coming in there. We're starting to warm up here in New England along the coast, but that persists. The heat persists out into the west portion of the country. And then as we get on out into time toward Friday and Saturday, Sunday, we're going to start to see that heat back off out west as a trough works in out there, cooler than normal as we thought we would see in the northeast. Everybody else starts to warm up, especially the central plains that uh, you folks out here in the Rocky Mountains as well will start to warm up too. So that's kind of the long range pattern. I'm going to show this every single day from now on through the rest of the summer because I think the GFS is just going to have a hurricane in the Gulf every single day. So that's what it's doing. Look at this. We get on out here 210 hours, 222 hours like day nine. Big hurricane just destroys Texas again. Fun to see that every day, but it's not going to happen. And uh, just it'll just be fun to see if the GFS ever drops that scenario because yesterday it hit us with two. Today it's only hitting us with one, so maybe that's progress. <laughs> I don't know, folks. The Hurricane Center shows Tropical Storm Barbara out here in the Western Pacific, and that will just continue to move west-northwest out of everybody's hair. We've got another chance of 90% uh, chance of another named system or a, at least a tropical depression forming in the West Pacific too, alongside of Barbara over the next few days, but uh, these are moving away and should not impact us at all. Now, big meteor shower out here. This is one of the biggest daytime meteor showers. It's called a, it's, it's, it's the, uh, the, uh, I want to say it wrong and I'm not saying it right. It's the Ariatids, Ariatids, it's the Ariatids. It is the uh, named after the constellation Aries. And if you want to see this, the intensity of these uh, meteors, this the meteor shower will fall during the daylight hours. And so if you want to see this, you got to get up right before dawn. That's when the moon will be at its, you know, out of your hair. And if you've got an unobstructed view, you want to look to the east, look toward the constellation Aries and you'll be able to see some of these meteors falling. And of course, the intensity of the whole entire meteor shower event, it ends roughly June the 17th, but it peaks, it's peaking this weekend. So over the next couple of days, you should be able to get out before dawn and see a few fall, uh, you know, shooting stars, meteors falling from the sky. Hopefully none of them will hit the ground, but this is a unique kind of an event because it's the biggest daytime meteor event since it usually peaks during the daylight hour. So that's how you can catch that if you want to. Looking at space weather, not a lot going on here, just some minor G1 conditions over the past couple of days. I want to get down here and uh, put on a different display so we can see that. So we've got, we've had G1 over the past couple of days. We can see G1 again. That's kind of the uh, very minor geo geostorm type activity. Nothing much going on with any of the views other than that. Looking at our sunspot activity, we've seen 4100, that big sunspot that shot off the flare. That's all around the limb. All of these other ones are small 
and nothing really coming on. So I'll keep watching it for you folks. That is the show for today, and hopefully it gives you a good idea of what to expect. Those are kind of the main weather events that we're watching. I'll be back tomorrow with a full show. We'll have our weather IQ question and do a full cold range weather world. But that's it for today, folks. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday and a uh, nice rest of your weekend. Thank <laughs> you.